Good afternoon. I'm Matthew Cameron, and I'll be your moderator for today's update on COVID-19 vaccines for Yukon. We are joined today by Premier Sandy Silver, Minister of Health and Social Services Pauline Frost, and Yukon's Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Brennan Hanley. Our sign language interpretation is being provided remotely today by Kevin Klein, and André Boursier from French Language Services Directorate will translate any questions from French-speaking journalists. Following our speakers, we will go to media for a round of questions from reporters. I will call you by name, and you will each have one question and one follow-up. Before we begin, I would like to note that the Legislative Assembly is currently in session. Premier Silver and Minister Frost may be required to vote in the Assembly, which means we may need to either pause or conclude the press conference early. I want to thank you in advance for your patience and understanding. Additionally, critical details of operational plans will be shared through a technical briefing, including details about how and where the public will access the COVID-19 vaccine as soon as possible. Lastly, if any reporters are having a problem hearing us, please email alexis.miller at gov.yk.ca. Premier Silver. Thank you very much, Dr. Cameron. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us on the traditional territory of the Kwan Dun First Nation and the Ta'an Kwachin Council. Today is an extremely important day for Yukoners. It's a day that we've been planning for and waiting for since the spring. A little over nine months ago, we had to announce the cancellation of the Arctic Winter Games. And about two weeks later, we confirmed our first cases of COVID-19 in the Yukon. This was a turning point for the territory, and the last nine months have presented many challenges to Yukoners. As the Premier of this amazing territory, I have stood before you many times announcing new rules and restrictions and asking you to comply even when it was hard and when it meant great sacrifices. I'm so very proud of what Yukoners have been able to achieve. Yukoners have adjusted to the pandemic and followed public health recommendations that have guided us through these turbulent times. The kindness, the compassion, the generosity of Yukoners has been extraordinary. We have come together to show the true spirit of Yukoners and show the spirit that makes this territory such a wonderful place to live. Today, I have the opportunity to bring a hopeful message. In today's meetings with the Prime Minister, we received confirmation that Yukon will begin receiving the Moderna vaccine in January. Unlike the provinces, Yukon will not receive the vaccine on a per capita basis. That system does not work for the Yukon because it would mean a very slow rollout of the vaccine. Yukon's allocation of the vaccine will be more than per capita. It will be enough to make sure that every adult in Yukon who wants the vaccine will be able to be vac vaccinated in early 2021. This is an important step in our path forward. It is the piece that we've been waiting for so that Yukon can turn the page and start returning back to normal. I want to take a moment here to thank the Minister of Health and Social Services, Minister Frost, Pauline Frost. Her work has been tireless. Anybody who knows Minister Frost personally knows how important equality is to the Minister. From the very beginning, she has pushed to make sure that Yukon's allocation uh, is enough for vaccines for everyone who wants it. She has spoken loudly at national tables, advocating for all Yukoners. I have echoed her message with the Prime Minister and with the Premiers, and I'm, a, and I'm happy to tell Yukoners that the Government of Canada has heard our call. Thank you very much, Minister Frost. Pauline. And again, thank you to the very hard work of the people, the team of people, at Health and Social Services, who have been planning, coordinating, researching, and organizing this vaccine plan on behalf of all of you. There is a team of incredibly dedicated health, Yukon health care workers who are ready to administer the vaccine as soon as it arrives. Thank you also to the team of people at Health and Social Services and Community Services who are working on the logistics uh, around storage and around distribution. Now, Minister Frost is here and will explain the plan for vaccine distribution in more detail. Dr. Hanley is also here uh, and he will be uh, discussing uh, the vaccine in more detail as well. Before I pass things over to Minister Frost and Dr. Hanley, I want to, remember, I want to remind you, Connors, that while this is good news, 
and it's reason for extreme optimism. We are not out of the woods yet, folks. As I have said before, this is a marathon, it's not a sprint. With today's news, we now can see the finish line. What this means is that now, more than ever, we need to dig deep. We need to stay focused and commit to this path forward. This is not the time to stop running. January is still weeks away, and we cannot let our guard down. The vaccine rollout will take time. Stay vigilant, Yukoners. Keep practicing the safe six plus one, wearing your mask, and doing your best to stick to your bubble and to avoid indoor gatherings. Know that an end is in sight, but we are not there yet. We need to work together now so that we can get through this together and to keep our territory strong and healthy. We are relying on each other to keep our loved ones safe, especially as we go through the holidays over the coming weeks. We need to commit to practicing the safe six plus one over again. It is more important now than it ever has been. Today is absolutely a day for optimism. It's for hope, a day for hope and celebration, but we must do our part to ensure that we can get to that finish line together. Please remember, as we've said here for nine months, be kind, be patient, and respectful of one another. Thank you, everybody. Masi Cho, Ganesh Chish, Shoni Thun, Minister Frost. The Masi Cho Premier of Silver, Jen Guinzi, everyone. It's an honor to speak to you today. Uh, th thank you for uh, joining us on this historic uh, day in our fight against COVID-19. As the Premier outlined, uh, much hard work has been done into getting us where we are today. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Premier Silver, Dr. Hanley, Deputy Minister uh, Stephen Samus, and other department officials who have advocated with us on behalf of you, Connors, in our conversations with the federal government and our territorial and provincial partners. I would also like to thank my territorial counterparts, Minister Kusigak and Minister Green, for their continued support in this pan-territorial effort to acknowledge remote and northern jurisdictions in Canada's COVID-19 vaccine distribution. Together, the territories are in a very fair, favorable position. Yukon will be receiving 50,400 vaccines of the Moderna vaccine during the first three months of 2021. This is enough to cover 25,000 people, which is 75% of Yukon's adult population. Based on predicted uptake, this, there will be enough vaccine to cover every single adult who wants to be vaccinated. This is incredibly good news for Yukon. Today, we are releasing the Yukon, uh, Yukon's COVID-19 strategy. The strategy outlines our goal of making a goal of working together so that every adult Yukoner who wants to be vaccinated can get vaccinated. The strategy has four, three uh, primary objectives. One, to ensure the COVID vaccine is safely and efficiently delivered to Yukoners. This means that when the vaccine gets here, we will be ready to deliver it. Two, to ensure there is barrier-free access to the COVID-19 vaccine. This means that the government will take it, take, make it easy for every Yukoner who wants to get vaccinated. Three, we must establish and maintain confidence in the process and the COVID-19 vaccine. Dr. Hanley will be providing more details about the vaccine, but it is important for you, Connors, to know that the COVID vaccine we get will be both safe and effective. Simply put, we want as many Yukoners as possible to get vaccinated, and we are going to make it safe and easy for people. We will take the vaccine to our communities and offer mobile clinics. We will take the vaccine directly into our long-term care homes, 
and we will take the vaccine to those who are homebound that already receive care and to our vulnerable populations. And here in Whitehorse, we will use our very successful flu, uh, mass flu clinic model to reach the vast majority of Yukoners. This single location clinic will feature expanded hours and has the capacity to deliver up to 1,000 vaccinations per day. Of course, not everyone and not every community will be able to get the vaccine on the first day it arrives in the Yukon. Much will depend on what uh, quantities are received and what time these details are still uh, being coordinated with our federal counterparts. There are also logistical considerations and importantly, when making decisions about where the vaccine needs to go first, we will be looking to Dr. Hanley and his team for advice based upon the epidemiological evidence. We can say that those at the high, highest risk from COVID will get the vaccines as quickly as possible. Priority population in Yukon will include residents and staff of long-term care homes and shelters, healthcare workers, including those who work in healthcare settings and personal support workers who work, in, who work directly with patients and clients. Older adults not living in long-term care, starting with those over the age of 80. Yukoners living in rural and remote communities. But Yukoners can be assured that once the vaccine arrives, we won't be ready to put needles in arms. And Yukoners can be assured that they will know how, when they can get vaccinated. A robust public awareness campaign will support the vaccination program. There is still a lot of preparation work underway and we will be ready. I want to emphasize again that we will receive enough vaccine doses in early 2021 so that every Yukoner who wants the vaccine will be able to get it. I look forward to sharing more details about the rollout of this vaccine as soon as they are available. As I said at the beginning, this is a really great day for Yukoners. We have reached an important milestone in our fight against COVID-19. I urge every Yukoner to get the vaccine as soon as it is available. Our actions will keep our families and our communities safe. Over time, widespread immunization will allow us to return to life without COVID restrictions. In the meanwhile, I also want to echo what the Premier said, we must continue to run this marathon, even though the finish line is in sight. Please continue to practice the safe six plus one and mask up. And please continue to check in on your friends, your neighbors and your community, especially during the holiday season. We need to continue to support each other as we pull through this together. Masi Cho, everyone. Thank you, Minister Frost. Merci, Cho. Good afternoon. Bonjour. Bon après-midi. Yesterday was another extraordinary and monumental day for our country as we reached a critical milestone in our fight against COVID-19. As many of us read and heard, Health Canada approved the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. And that is really the beginning of the news that we have been seeking since this pandemic first came into our lives. The Yukon vaccine strategy is equally a landmark for Yukon, an essential step in our efforts as a territory to provide every Yukoner with access to a safe and effective vaccine. I'm happy to echo the minister's remarks that any eligible adult Yukoner who wishes to receive the Moderna vaccine will be able to do so within the first few months of 2021. Although in Canada, Pfizer is the talk of the town at the moment, Yukon will be receiving the Moderna vaccine as we had requested. The Pfizer vaccine is a great choice for larger population areas, but due to its considerable logistical requirements, it is not feasible for us to distribute amongst our small population 
and our small and widely dispersed rural communities. Although Pfizer has just received Health Canada approval, Moderna is next in line, and regulatory approval is anticipated in the weeks to come. This wait for approval, just as for the Pfizer product, is not in any way slowing down our planning. When we actually receive the product clearly depends on this approval, but we also know that the interval will be short. The timeline of when we receive these vaccines will be confirmed once it receives that final approval from Health Canada. But as the Minister states, we're anticipating and preparing for vaccinating not just for the four priority groups, but the entire Yukon adult population that is both eligible and willing to receive the vaccine. I know that this day seems so far away just a few months ago, but now with the first, vac the first vaccine is within sight. So our goal of having the overwhelming majority of the adult population immunized against COVID-19. The journey towards population immunity begins today. I'm so pleased that Yukon will be receiving the Moderna vaccine because it will not require the ultra-cold storage or present the same transportation challenges that the Pfizer vaccine would have. The Moderna vaccine will need to be stored at a temperature of minus 20 degrees Celsius rather than the minus 70 degrees of the Pfizer product. And to meet these requirements, the federal government has ordered on our behalf ultra-cold uh, ultra freezers to store the vaccines. A little more about this vaccine. Moderna is a smaller American biotech company specializing in messenger RNA technology. The Moderna vaccine is very similar to the Pfizer product. Both work through the insertion of messenger RNA into the body's cells, effectively a blueprint for the most well-known of the COVID viral proteins. This results in the body's own cellular machinery producing this protein almost like part of a dummy virus to which the body then develops an immune response which keeps the real COVID virus out. With these vaccines, like the Pfizer vaccine, the Moderna vaccine has claimed 94% efficacy based on interim results from the phase three trial of 30,000 participants. In this trial, only 11 participants of 15,000 in the vaccine group developed COVID-19 infection versus 185 in the placebo group. Even more impressive is that no persons developed severe disease in the uh, vaccine group compared to, 30, uh, compared to 30 in the placebo group. These trials included over 7,000 people over age 65, over 5,000 with underlying medical conditions that put them at higher risk for severe COVID-related outcomes. The vaccine also worked just as effectively across ages, ages, genders, and ethnic groups. Throughout these clinical trials, thousands of volunteers came forward and many scientists and health professionals dedicated themselves over the last few months to developing vaccines. Without these individuals' dedication and the level of funding provided, this process would have been much longer. The results I just discussed are based on the current Phase three Moderna clinical trial, demonstrating that the vaccine is safe and highly effective. This may seem like a fast turnaround of a vaccine from conception to authorization and release. And it is. Typically, a vaccine submission review can take a year or more, and the whole process from design to delivery can easily take a decade. However, because of the pandemic, every step has been accelerated while maintaining the integrity and quality of each of these steps. Similarly, Health Canada is able to expedite its approval processes without sacrificing any of the review or approval measures. With the current circumstances and immediate need for a COVID-19 vaccine, this was a massive undertaking by both industry, civilians and government to ensure that by 2021, Canadians would be able to receive secure and effective immunization. 
Canada's vaccine regulatory process is internationally recognized for its safety and reliability. The bar for vaccine approvals has to be set very high because we're giving a medical product to literally millions of otherwise healthy people. These approvals are not taken lightly, requiring extensive review from a range of scientific experts before a vaccine can be issued final approval. You might say this is a vaccine approval process on steroids, but not a single step in the usual regulatory process has been missed. Instead, innovative ways to accelerate the usual process have been used, just as, as is taking place in other countries around the world. While time has been of the essence, Canada has made no compromises as this vaccine was developed, maintaining quality and safety as utmost priorities. In Yukon, the vaccine itself will be provided at no cost. Yukoners will require two doses. Once you receive your first dose, you'll be required to obtain your second dose a month following. Nurses and healthcare providers will be managing the vaccinations and ensuring that all Yukoners who want to be immunized receive both doses. For the time being, the vaccine is recommended for people over 18 years of age or 18 years and older. All adult Yukoners who wish to receive the vaccine will have access within these early months of 2021. The priority recipients may include long-term care residents and staff, as the minister said, healthcare workers, older adults, and our rural and remote communities. My focus as CMOH will be to oversee the delivery of vaccine to immunize and protect Yukoners in the most efficient and safest way possible. With our plan in place, our delivery of vaccine of immunization may well be completed sooner than any other jurisdiction in Canada, along with our territorial counterparts. As Minister Frost mentioned, we will ensure that all communities can receive proper immunization, and this is a priority. Mobile vaccine clinics will be made available as a primary delivery method to reach residents in remote communities throughout Yukon. These mobile units will make two trips to ensure all who receive the first dose can receive their second. Community health centres will also keep a small supply of additional vaccines if citizens are unable to visit the mobile unit. As we continue to finalise details about the arrival of the vaccine, we will partner and work alongside First Nations governments, municipalities and other partners to navigate the supply and timely distribution of this unique vaccine. I'm very confident we will do this well. Over a decade of being on the inside of Yukon's immunization system, I can say with confidence that we know how to do this and we know how to do it well. With this gift we are about to receive, we have a chance to demonstrate to the rest of the country how well a population approach to COVID vaccine immunization can work. As with the other territories, we are the only jurisdictions to receive enough vaccine to cover our entire eligible adult populations. We have over 38 million Canadians to thank for this. Not only do we have a fantastic opportunity, we also have an obligation to do this right. This obligation includes us giving you all the information that you need in, in order to help you feel comfortable with receiving the vaccine. It is then up to you to step forward for the vaccine when it is offered. Our collective goal should be not to waste a single precious dose that could easily go to somewhere else in need. Meanwhile, let's remember that as vaccine draws closer, we should be pressed more than ever to keep COVID from circulating among us. As the Minister and Premier have both said, until we have achieved our goals and reached reasonable population immunity, we must continue to practice the safe six plus one. We need to be patient, vigilant, and diligent. Once vaccine arrives, time will go quickly. We will need to wait for our turn, but then make sure we are there and ready 
when our turn comes. The risk of COVID-19 will not go away for a while. We must continue through the holidays and into 2021 to be vigilant that COVID could be among us at any time. We need to continue to pay diligent attention to proper physical distancing, washing our hands often and wearing our non-medical masks when needed. Until we have enough vaccine and enough people, we must protect each other by following all the recommended guidelines. Meanwhile, thank you. Remember to take care of each other. Stay well. Merci, merci, Chong. Thank you, Dr. Hanley. Thank you, Minister Frost. Thank you, Premier Silver. We'll now go to reporters, and uh, we'll start with those who are uh, here in person with us. Uh, I'll call on Haley with the Yukon News. Thank you. That was a lot of information to keep up with. I guess my first question right now is um, the 75% um, providing vaccine doses for 75% of the adult population. How did we um, get to that, that percentage number? I'll, I'll take a stab at that, Haley. Thanks. Um, uh, so the, the question, I don't know if everyone heard the question, but it was, uh, how is the 75% uh, determined? And that's really based on a, on a national um, estimate of um, um, an estimated uh, uptake, uptake rate. So the an initial, uh, basically, population coverage um, would estimate a 75% um, as um, <clears throat> what some might say would be um, an optimistic um, uptake assessment. I think for here, that's a realistic um, uptake um, assessment. It also corresponds uh, with what we would consider a reasonable uh, coverage to allow for um, for herd immunity. Of course, that's that's a shifting question. The evidence is still coming in as to uh, there are so many factors that play into what does that mean in, in the face of a COVID-19 pandemic. But it's a reasonable estimate of what we think would, would provide um, herd, herd immunity or population immunity against uh, COVID-19. I think it's important also that, uh, th that that's not a hard ceiling, that that's our working amount. Um, and uh, that if, um, if we were to achieve that 75% uh, and we still had people uh, wanting vaccine, we would be uh, acquiring additional vaccine. Thanks, Haley. Uh, just a reminder to those on the line, please mute your lines uh, until you're called upon. Uh, Haley, do you have a follow-up? Um, I did. My other follow-up question. Um, right now, the uh, vaccines are being recommended for people 18 years and older. Could you just explain why that is right now? Any information we have about that or when um, children might be expected to receive vaccines? Yeah, certainly. Um, so the uh, the Moderna is likely, and again, the the Moderna is a reminder that the Moderna has not yet been approved by Health Canada, um, and it is it is as I said next next in line. Um, the clinical trial, uh, the, the the phase three clinical trial with the thirty thousand participants was uh, had a few exclusions, and one of the exclu exclusions was people under age eighteen. So the Moderna vaccine does not yet have the data or evidence to uh, to allow to to support use in in children um, now there is uh, and i I just heard that uh, they are actually planning planning further trials that will involve um, ages uh, i as I understand ages twelve and up so we will get that uh, uh, data um, as the as the months months go by we will get additional uh, data on that vaccine for um, for an under 18, at least down to age 12. And of course, with all of the other products coming on, we will expect expanded indications. Clearly, the, the, uh, the, the priority in terms of outcomes um, and uh, the, what we understand of the transmission dynamics of COVID-19, our, our priorities comprise the, the adult population. By immunizing enough adults, we will be protecting our children as well. Thank you. Uh, we'll now go to John with CKRW. Thank you. Um, I'm wondering why the government has decided to follow the flu clinic model for distribution. This is a different virus. Shouldn't there be different protocols in place? Yeah, 
Sure. Okay. Um, yeah. Thanks. Um, so I, th I think what what we have shown with the um, with the mass clinic um, model is that it's a very efficient way to immunize lots of people. Um, uh, lots of people in one day, and, and uh, as, as the minister said, up to a thousand people a day. So the the the, the principle, and and we as as community nursing and uh, uh, Department of Health and Social Services under the, the direction of the minister, were organizing the flu clinic. It was really with COVID and uh, COVID in mind. We were anticipating how we would do COVID vaccine using the flu clinic as a as a model. So it's actually a, a perfect segue from uh, influenza immunization to COVID immunization using the same model. Of course, the uh, the flu clinics had all of the COVID safety protocols built in that uh, in, in terms of spacing, in terms of sanitation, um, in terms of screening, um, mask use by providers, all of those were already built in. So we've already practiced how to do COVID-19 immunization in a mass clinic model. So it's actually a, a perfect model for the, the, the COVID-19, and we're very confident that this is going to be the best way to deliver vaccines in a safe and efficient way for the white horse population. Thanks, John. Do you have a follow-up? I do. Um, in regards to the, uh, the flu clinic deployment model, uh, it, it was mentioned that there will be 1,000 shots administered per day. Where did that number come from? Yeah. So the the number again came from came from uh, planning out based on the experience of the uh, of the um, the flu clinic plus the number of immunizers immunizers that we anticipate to have available. So again, we've got lots of space. We're assembling and training lots of immunizers. We have very experienced immunizers uh, to be the core um, the core immunizers, along with experienced managers to know how to run the show, as it were. So. It was, uh, and I don't remember off uh, the top of my head the most done in a day, uh, but it was certainly easily um, in the 500 range, and um, it was anticipated that it would it would be easy to double that. We had very uh, very good feedback. Uh, we learned lessons about logistics and signage and all of those things, but in general, uh, people were well served. Lineups were minimum, and we know that using the same model, we have enough to go up to that uh, that level. Thank you, John. We'll now go to the phone line, and we'll start with Tim with the White Horse Star. Yes, hello. So how confident are you with the distribution date of January, considering the Moderna virus, virus or vaccination, rather, isn't uh, approved yet? Is there some flexibility in those dates that could be pushed back a bit? So um, I want to just, um, you know, reaffirm uh, what the Premier had indicated earlier as well um, as uh, Dr. Hanley and uh, indicating to you, Connors, that um, we have confirmation from the federal government and our colleagues that we would see vaccines arriving here in January. So really have to make that clear that we... Um, and in terms of administration and um, logistics of distribution, that has been well thought out, as you will quickly see in the um, the the uh, strategy that we just are uh, distributing to all of you. Um, we'll describe to you very clearly how that will happen. Um, so once the vaccines arrive here on the ground, we will quickly uh, disperse that out into the communities. The teams are set up. Um, and of course, we have uh, established um, the the health professionals that really are good at what they do. Um, we just uh, uh, really inoculated twelve thousand four hundred and almost five twelve thousand five hundred um, Yukoners in a matter of four weeks, which is a really good indication that. All in the middle of a pandemic, practices have been followed. So we are ready to roll when the vaccines arrive here on the ground. Thank you. Thanks, Minister. Thanks, Minister. And I'll, I'll just add to that um, that um, we are planning on the assumption that the Health Canada approval process will continue and be finalized uh, within the next few weeks. So, uh, of course, 
it would probably not be a good idea to wait and then to start your planning once you have that approval. So this, these are there are multiple synchronous um, um, activities going on on this whole uh, assumption. And and uh, just a reminder that the health the approval process has actually been what it's what they call a rolling rolling approval so the approval process has actually been in place for months already um, so as new data is made available that is reviewed by by the health canada reviewer so we really are entering the final stages of the health canada approval process now if for whatever reason that did not come through then we go to plan b or plan c so we do have backup plans we have you know there are other vaccines in the pipeline so there are always going to be uh, contingencies, and and uh, part of the planning is looking at what what is Plan B and Plan C. But um, there, all the signals are that we will, will be looking forward to the Health Canada approval to allow us to roll out the Moderna vaccine. Thanks, Tim. Do you have a follow up? No, thank you. That was good. Okay, we'll move along to Claudiane avec Radio Canada. Oui, pour le docteur Henley, euh, ben, c'est possible de tout me répéter en français, <rire> euh, ou du moins euh, de dire euh, ce à quoi on s'attend euh, de recevoir euh, au territoire, combien de doses, pour qui, euh, et euh, ce que ça représente par rapport au reste du pays. Là, vous disiez qu'on qu recevait plus que euh, qu'une qu qu proportion de la population. So the question is for Dr. Henley. We won't ask you to repeat everything, but could you at least give us the uh, the, the the main points in terms of uh, number of doses, distribution, uh, how it's going to be uh, organized, and who will be receiving uh, the vaccine in the Yukon? Oui, merci, uh, Claudien. Uh, et uh, oui, uh, malheureusement, je ne peux pas répéter tout uh, en français, mais je peux, uh, je peux dire peut-être les, uh, les bonnes nouvelles qu'on uh, attend de recevoir uh, d'être fourni avec uh, le vaccin Moderna, comme on a demandé uh, au gouvernement fédéral, uh, dans les, uh, les premières... Um, trois quatre mois de euh, 21 de l'année 21 donc on va commencer on anticipe de, de commencer avec euh, le moment euh, où, où, où bientôt à, 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 après euh, l'approbation la, de santé canada et puis euh, les euh, on, on, on va euh, on va préparer euh, pour euh, les, les cliniques euh, qui, qui va euh, 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 qui, qui va commencer euh, dans les premiers trois mois de 21 de, de l'année euh, 2021 et euh, aussi on va avoir euh, assez de vaccins euh, au, au premier coup pour vacciner euh, 75% de la population adulte euh, du Yukon et on va comme ça on, on a on a assez on, on a toute la population effectivement comme priorité et donc c'est un cadeau euh, de de la reste du Canada pour les pour les territoires et euh, en considérant que on est euh, euh, on est on est une petite population qui est euh, éloigné euh, de, de son population majeure au Canada. Euh, donc, euh, les préparations euh, sont déjà, on, on, est, on est déjà en train de, de commencer toutes les préparations, les mobilisations pour, pour le vaccin Moderna. Euh, le Moderna, c'est comme un jumeau euh, de, de Pfizer euh, qui sont les, euh, les vaccins basés sur le RNA euh, messager, messager euh, comme technologie. Euh, et donc, euh, les... Euh, les, euh, les essais euh, jusqu'au maintenant euh, montrent que le vaccin euh, arrive à une pourcentage d'efficacité de, de, euh, de 80, 95 effectivement pour cent. Donc, on est très optimiste. On, on est... Euh, euh, on, on est euh, euh, 
on, on attend avec anxiété pour le, pour le début on, et, et ça va prendre quand même quelques mois. Donc, il faut rappeler qu'on a, um, a le reste de, de, de la voyage avec COVID entre ici et la fin du vaccin, mais on est dans une situation um, par rapport au reste du Canada, on est, on est dans une situation très favorable uh, par rapport au vaccin. Merci, Cloriane. Avez-vous une autre question? Oui, euh, Dr. Henley, vous êtes soulagé? La question, si je suis soulagé, euh, mais euh, oui, euh, je peux dire oui, euh, parce que, euh, comme tu le monde dit, euh, c'est comme une lumière dans les, dans, les, dans les semaines qui sont euh, assez euh, noires à ce moment. Euh, donc, euh, on, on vit un temps très, très difficile, on a beaucoup de défis. Euh, donc, euh, c'est vraiment des bonnes nouvelles pour, pour tout euh, de nous. Euh, mais euh, on a du de travail devant nous. Euh, c'est sûr que tout le monde, euh, et pas juste euh, l'équipe, euh, le, le gouvernement et, et l'équipe qui travaille avec moi, mais on a tout le monde beaucoup de travail devant nous. On a toujours des défis journaliers de COVID. Euh, sinon, euh, dans le reste du Canada, même ici, on, on, on vit avec ce risque euh, tous les jours. Donc, il faut être, euh, il faut être vigilant euh, et euh, il faut, il faut suivre euh, les guides parce que, euh, oui, on a le reste de, de, de le marathon nous attend pour la fin euh, toujours. Perhaps uh, you could repeat in English just as that, that wasn't covered earlier. Yeah. Uh, the question was, are you relieved? The question is, yes, whether, whether I'm relieved. And I, I was saying, uh, yes, I'm relieved, but, um, but there's still a lot uh, to go before us. Uh, the, the Premier and uh, the, the Minister of Health both uh, refer to the marathon that we're not finished yet. Um, I remember the one and only marathon I actually ran when I hit the wall, and that was a very, very tough time near the end to kind of get through. And I and I feel that we're you know we're kind of in that moment now when we're all tired. Um, we know that people people are are tired and people are worried about what's next, what's tomorrow, what's going to hit us next, and so we have to be. That's where the vigilance and the awareness uh, has has to continue. That we have to be. Um, we, we, we have to maintain our guard and uh, maintain our adherence to the safe sex and the mask use because we're, we're, uh, we're only at the beginning of the end and uh, there's months yet ahead of us. Thank you. Uh, we'll now go to Laura with CBC. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, Dr. Hanley, I'm wondering if there are any people um, for whom the vaccine is not recommended, um, for example, uh, people with certain allergies or other medical conditions. Yeah. Now, of course, we, we have to remember that uh, this is all in anticipation. And even with the Pfizer vaccine, the the um, the information will be changing literally day by day until the Pfizer vaccine actually rolls out in the uh, in the areas in Canada where it's rolling out uh, next week. So um, so there's there have been a lot of questions, for instance, about um, regarding the, the people who had allergic reactions uh, in the UK with the Pfizer vaccine and and what the advice will be. And there will be advice that's specific to the Canadian context by the time we get to those first days of Pfizer. The usual immunization, the usual um, uh, advice um, in people with allergies is if they have known allergies to the, um, to the vaccine or to the components of the vaccine. So those are details that we don't, we don't know yet. And of course, it's a new vaccine. So likely, likely the guidance will be around those general. If, if someone is known to be allergic to the components, which will be will be will be published by then, then that would be the the advice. Having said that, uh, 
Immunisa um, immunization always carries a tiny risk of uh, allergic reaction, and that's part of the training and the um, the, the running of an immunization, immunization clinic is the ability to recognize and treat uh, uh, to treat allergic reactions. So this is this is all part of the preparation. Um, and uh, there are, uh, of course, it's going to be adults, and we'll be waiting for more specifics if there are any uh, any other sectors. Again, with the uh, there are some there are some um, uh, kind of uh, uh, um, advisories around who, and even with the Pfizer vaccine, which is literally days away, uh, there is still we're, we're still settling on some of the details around eligibility and who it will be recommending for or not. I think what I'm very reassured again by the by the the inclusiveness of the uh, Moderna trial and, and the clinical trial. So I think that will give us scope to anticipate. It will be um, uh, appropriate and uh, and the vast uh, appropriate for the vast majority um, of the uh, of the Yukon adult population, and we'll will have much more detail on that as we get closer to the actual implementation. Thank you, Laura. Do you have a follow up? Yes, thank you so much. Um, I'm wondering if there is, are any kind of second tier priority groups after those four, first four groups that you mentioned, or, or will it kind of be a, a free for all after that? And um, if I can tack on in addition to that, if you have any idea of when the general population, people who aren't in those priority groups, like a, a timeline or a month when they can expect to actually be able to go to that clinic. Yeah, we'll definitely be uh, coming out with more details on that, and that and that's the the the, the planning that will take place in more detail now that we know and we because now we have been assured of our supply and we can we can plan accordingly. So uh, I but I I think the general gist of it is that we are going to be designing this around the the most efficient way to get the most people immunized in the shortest amount of time with two doses, and that. We would consider that we are all a priority population. That is our goal, and uh, the, the details we'll be discussing and consulting uh, with um, with our partners, and uh, and coming back to you as as those are being developed. I, I do uh, want to uh, provide a little more context um, to say that. Um, Although uh, we have defined the uh, Yukon priority group, um, we we do uh, as we go out into the communities. The the um, the objective is to immunize all those adults within the community context. So it's not going to. We're not focusing on 75 percent of that community-based population. I think the objective is to hit the maximum amount of individuals, uh, adults that um, are ready and um, are prepared to uh, do the, take the vaccine and. So I want to just make that clear for you, Connors. It's not um, specifically about, you know, pr not uh, taking that into consideration. So you, Connors, living in rural and remote communities, including our First Nations uh, communities, will be uh, fully inoculated as they um, as the vaccine uh, comes available. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Frost. Thank you, Dr. Hanley. Thank you again, Premier Silver. I'd like to thank everyone for their time today, including those tuning in online. UConn's COVID-19 vaccine strategy is available online at uconn.ca. The next regular COVID-19 update will take place Tuesday, December 15th at 9.30 a.m.